Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to uh, module 5 where we are continuing um, a numerical implementation of time evolution operator through which we are going to get the solution of TDSC. And uh, so far we have shown that the symmetrized product, the split operator approach we are going to use and symmetrized product is going to give us um, the, the minimum error uh, if we take the time step to be very small. And, uh, and we will move on. Uh, so, for, the, for that implementation, uh, we have to note that the final numerical implementation of symmetrized split operator based time propagator which we have shown here requires uh, to present the kinetic and potential energy matrices in the diagonal form because that is the trick we are going to use. Previously, we said that if a fun if a operator is can be represented in its diagonal form then I can very easily find out exponential of that operator by exponentiating each element as this one like this way. So, we need to convert now uh, this kinetic energy operator and potential energy operator in the diagonal form and we have to check what is the general form we get in the grid representation. So, we have to remember that we are using the grid representation to, um, uh, to represent all these operators in the, uh, in the matrix form. In the position space, first we will deal, deal with the potential part because it is easy, easy to deal with. So, this part we will deal with first the middle part. In the position space, what is position space? Position space, space is we have shown is an x coordinate, this is x coordinate and in the x coordinate we have made this grid. So, this is called position space, many times many occasions this is also called real space. So, in position space grid representation which we have already uh, seen in different uh, in, in Python chapter 2 as well as in this module also we have shown how to prepare the grid in the position space. The potential energy operator can be represented by a diagonal matrix directly. So, that is the good news. This potential energy operator has a diagonal form in position space. So, it has already a diagonal form and because it has a diagonal form one can get the exponential of the potential energy matrix directly by evaluating or exponentiating each diagonal element. So, that is that is quite straightforward in the um, uh, 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 method. So, in the position space grid we know that the wave function psi x 0 let us say at t equals 0 I am just looking at um, the wave function and that is a discretized wave function on the grid representation we have a discretized wave function y naught y 1 y 2 like this y n minus 1 details of this discretization has been discussed already in Python tutorial 2 and um, uh, one can 
uh, review that one quickly. So, this is the representation, discretized representation of the wave function and if we have this discretized uh, representation of the wave function, remember uh, the right hand part of the TDAC is nothing but H psi and H psi uh, it uh, sorry not, not TDAC but the time evolution. In the time evolution we have e to the power um, Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show this. So we have this uh, potential part. So potential operator. When potential operator is acting on a wave function, let's say x zero, when it's acting on it, it is potential. Uh, so so one can assume that I have a wave function like this. So this is your psi x zero, and potential. Let's say I have like this this is Vx. So, potential we see that and if we multiply this function by this function, if we potential operator is nothing but a multiplication operator. So, this is nothing but Vx psi x0, it is a multiplication operator. And if I multiply this potential operator uh, by this um, uh, multiply this uh, wave function by this potential operator or potential function then this is nothing but multiplying individual points on the grid. So, what we have? We have individual grid discretized potential values and each grid points the values of those individual functions can be multiplied. If we multiply then the this function will be obtained. So, so because uh, the, the, uh, the, this part matrix representation of this part would be simply V x naught multiplied by y naught, V x 1 multiplied by y 1, V x 2 multiplied by y 2 like this. It is just multiplying um, corresponding elements. And if it is so, then this can be represented as a diagonal matrix V, I call it V0 let us say 0, 0, 0, then 0, V1, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, V2, 0, 0 like this way, then Y0, Y1, Y2 like this and we can multiply this. Why we can multiply this is because uh, matrix multiplication rule of multi matrix multiplication is that we multiply this and this then we add this and this but because every elements are 0 we get back only this value. This, this comes, this is direct result of the matrix multiplication and because of this matrix multiplication, nature of matrix multiplication, what we get is n by n matrix we get in a diagonal form. So, potential um, uh, operator uh, is, a, is, a, is a diagonal matrix and uh, because it is a diagonal matrix one can directly write down um, uh, the exponential of the potential matrix uh, as follows. I have this potential matrix V which is uh, in a diagonal form already. So, I can write down propagator potential part of the propagator at e to the power minus i V delta T by H cut is nothing but e to the power minus i V naught delta T by H cut then 0, 0 like this, then 0 e to the power minus i v1 delta t by h cut 0 like this, 0, 0 then e to the power minus i v2 delta t by h cut like this. It is going to be a diagonal matrix. So, potential form uh, sorry uh, the potential part of this uh, propagator is very simple under grid representation it gets a diagonal form, the potential uh, operator gets a diagonal form. So, 
I have this exponential part very easily evaluated. What about the kinetic energy part? Kinetic energy part has we have to employ certain trick here and what is the issue? Issue is that in position space grid, so we write down the position space grid like this where we have x coordinate we have seen that on the positions grid um, kinetic energy we have represented before actually kinetic energy has this derivative kinetic energy is a derivative operator and for the derivative operator for the evaluation of the derivative operator we have used um, uh, in the in the in chapter uh, in, in module 4 we have used um, finite difference method to represent this derivative operator and in the end this because it is a second derivative the T operator has adopted a tri diagonal matrix tri diagonal matrix this has been presented already in module 4 in the last module. And what does it mean by tri diagonal matrix? This potential operator looks like I have a diagonal value, I have uh, upper diagonal and lower diagonal. All these values are present, remaining part are 0. That is why it is called tri diagonal, remaining parts are 0. So, this, this has adopted a tri diagonal matrix form under position space grid representation. Under position space grid representation and because it is a di tri diagonal matrix e to the power of t is not a straightforward way of evaluation it is not possible we cannot use that trick which we have used for the diagonal matrix. So, uh, what we can do is that instead of this position space we will look at the exact form of the uh, this is nothing but minus h cut square by 2 m then second derivative this is for the position space. This is the form of position space. If I express the kinetic energy operator in the position space, uh, then I get this form. Immediately I get this second derivative and second derivative only will give me using finite difference method only give me this tri diagonal matrix form. But instead of position space if I use the momentum space what is momentum space similarly I have this momentum p as a function of momentum here is a function of x I am now as a function of p I have this grid representation same idea is the same I have grid representation in the momentum space if I try to represent T what is the form of the kinetic energy operator in the mom momentum space it is nothing but P square divided by 2 M which is nothing but a function of P divided by 2 M. It is just like V in position space it is a function of X in position space. So, potential energy is a function simple function of position space similarly kinetic energy operator is nothing but a simple function of position uh, momentum space and because it is a simple function of momentum space when I employ that on a wave function what is going to happen the wave function now has to be here I have represented the wave function in the position space. Now I have to represent the wave function in the momentum space. If I represent the wave function in the momentum space, 
then it is nothing but the multiplication of two functions. One function is coming from the operator, one function coming from the wave function. So, here also if I have this um, kinetic energy operator represented in the momentum space, then multiplication of these two functions is nothing but the element wise multiplication of each point on the grid. But now the grid is momentum grid, it is not a position grid anymore. So, element wise multiplication, so which is which is nothing but I have now psi, but remember psi previously we have represented in the position space, now we are going to represent, we have to represent in the momentum space that is P0, that is the first thing P0, here we have used X0, similarly P0 and then psi P1 like this. This is a column matrix again in the momentum space and then this is nothing but a multiplication. So, if it is multiplication then finally I get um, this value as um, I will call it F P0 then F P1 like this it is just multiplication and if it is multiplication then matrix form would be like this. I have a diagonal matrix, this is psi P0, psi P1, like this psi Pn minus 1. And here I have diagonal matrix for the kinetic energy operator in the momentum space P0, then 0, 0, 0, 0 it gets diagonal form just because as a consequence of the matrix multiplication rules P1 then 0 0 0 then 0 0 F P2 0 0 0 like this way. So, we get the diagonal form. So, what is the uh, basic idea of what I have shown here is that uh, if I want to use this part and this part in my calculation, I cannot do it in the position grid, I have to do it in the momentum, momentum space. In the momentum space, so the bottom line here is the in the momentum space kinetic energy gets a diagonal form. And because kinetic energy gets a diagonal form we have to convert it to the momentum space. So, the overall scheme is following now, we are going to write down the entire scheme. So, this is the mathematical or analytical form, approximate form of the uh, split operator method where we have used symmetrized product, symmetrized product it is symmetrically arranged, here is the kinetic energy part, here is the kinetic energy part and remaining part is the potential energy part here. And, and, and note this half because there are is divided by 2, kinetic energy is somehow divided by 2 and, um, and, and then you are distributed symmetrically. Now, this is the analytical form of the uh, split operator method which we are going to use. For this we know that error is going to be 10 to the uh, uh, delta t to the power 3 which means that error would be very small if I take the delta t to be very small. So, the first uh, cycle of this numerical step would be uh, as you can see that this operator has to act on this wave function first. So, first step will take to be wave function has to be converted to the momentum space. Okay. So, that is going to be the, um, the first uh, uh, step which means that Fourier transform and that can be done using Fourier transform. the wave function position to momentum conversion of a wave function, Posi position representation to momentum representation of the wave function can be done using Fourier transform and um, that we have already uh, encountered in um, Python tutorial 3 and uh, how to do this kind of Fourier transform. So, we will skip those uh, techniques uh, here 
we will just mention that Fourier transform is a technique by which one can transform the wave function from position space to the uh, momentum space and one can make use of fast Fourier transform algorithm for this. This is called fast Fourier transform it is called FFT algorithm to transform this one. Why you need to transform this one? Because I have to uh, I have to use this momentum operator in the Fourier domain in the in the in the in the momentum domain and that is why. So, now uh, if I if I use this um, first kinetic energy part this is the first kinetic energy part the first kinetic part of the propagator uh, that will be employed here as you can see but remember here we have we are using this uh, in the momentum space and we are getting propagating the wave function that is easy to do because this part is a is a diagonal form now. Once we have got this propagation due to the first part of the uh, uh, wave function remember next operator is going to be this part which is the potential and now potential has to be done potential operator this has to act in the um, real space because it has to act on the real space all we have to do is that we have to use inverse Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform the wave function from momentum space to position space again because this operator will act in the position space that is why a function has to be converted. Here we have converted from the first step we have converted from um, position or real space to momentum space. But here we are doing the inverse of Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform can also be done with the help of this the same um, uh, fast Fourier transform algorithm which is called IFFT inverse Fourier transform algorithm can be used. Once we have got the propagated wave function uh, in the position space we will employ this kinetic uh, sorry this is potential part. So, this is the potential part part of the propagator. that is acting on the uh, position space representation of the wave function and we get another time evolution for the position uh, for the potential part. Once we get that again so we are we are done with up to this but then again I have to employ this kinetic energy part and in order to do the kinetic energy part again I have to move to the uh, momentum part. So, I have to convert it from position to momentum representation of the wave function. Once I represent it then I can employ the remaining part of the kinetic part the second kinetic part I can employ. Uh, and I can convert I can get this propagation due to the, the this second kinetic part in the momentum space and once we do that then finally I get this uh, wave function and this wave function needs to be 
converted to the position space again. back to position space. So, what I get is that uh, psi x 0 delta t 0 plus delta t the first propagation due to delta t is actually represented by this wave function x 0 plus delta t. So, this wave function is representing the first propagation for delta t and it is quite clear now that the entire step which I have presented right now 1 to 7 steps the sequence has to be now repeated for getting my desired time. Why I need to repeat? because in the end I have represented already that e to the power uh, this final wave function at a particular time t is nothing but product of this small step propagator which is i delta t by h cut then e to the power minus i delta t by h cut n times I have to make the product and then this is n times and then you multiply by x 0. So, I have to repeat this propagation delta t short time propagation uh, which includes all three uh, terms here n times I have to repeat so that I can get the desired time and n times y because t that is the value where I would like to reach is going to be n delta t plus t initial and t initial we have taken to be 0. So, it is nothing but delta t multiplied by n. we have uh, come to the uh, end of this module. Uh, uh, the, in this module we have presented uh, the numerical implementation, how numerically one can solve TDSE and what is the approach one should use one should use grid representation. This is not the only way one can get the numerical solution of TDSE. This is one efficient way, very frequently used way of uh, getting numerical solution of TDSE. And what we have shown is that split operator approach can be very useful. What is the approximation behind split operator approach? We, we, we have presented that and we have seen that the symmetrized product of the split operator is going to be uh, more efficient because it is uh, its error is associated with uh, delta t to the power 3 and uh, uh, we will we will see how to implement this uh, uh, in the python programming we have to see the implementation of this split operator approach um, and we'll see it um, in one of the python module in fact in the next python module we will see that. We will stop here, we will meet again for the next module.